Hi and welcome back to the channel. So here's the story so far. Firstly, I bought the Switch front wheel e-bike conversion kit directly from Switch. I paid full price and waited the almost obligatory six months for it to arrive. And I filmed a very positive review of the kit, which you can see here. I was then contacted by a Chinese company called 100G who wanted to send me their equivalent to the Switch, the Gico front wheel conversion kit. It came and I shot a review, comparing it favorably to the Switch kit, as it felt less obtrusive while riding, it looked better in my opinion, was available for delivery much sooner and represented overall better value for money, especially in terms of battery life. That review is available on this link. Now, most recently, 100G asked me if I would like to test their Gico rear wheel conversion kit, to which I, of course, said yes. And having conducted the test, it became my favourite of all the options. As I realised that a rear wheel e-bike conversion is the most natural feeling riding experience. That review is available here. And that brings us to now, when I'm going to combine two of those options and connect the Gico front wheel kit and the rear wheel kit to create a dual e-bike conversion, offering electric support to both wheels simultaneously. Now, Gico have kindly sent me the modification kit and big thanks to them. The instructions to complete the conversion are on YouTube and I'm super keen to give it a go. The question is, is it any good? And is it worth the $1,255 or just over a thousand pounds, which the full dual kit costs if buying outright? Stay tuned to find out. Now I'm not gonna take you through the detailed fitting of the two individual kits as I've converted them both independently in my previous videos. In a nutshell, You'd swap out the regular front wheel for the Gico wheel containing a 250 watt motor. You can also get a 350 and a 500 watt motor, but they're not legal for the road in the UK. But that motor wheel is then connected to a battery and control unit, which would, if fitted independently, be controlled by either the cadence sensor on the crank to monitor and support your pedaling or a throttle on the handlebars. Though you can only use this on private land as using a throttle-powered e-bike on UK roads and cycle paths is against the law. Likewise, the rear wheel conversion involves swapping out the regular rear wheel for the Gico rear wheel, which has another 250 watt motor in the hub. Again, also available as 350 or 500 watt should your country's laws allow it. But this particular kit, when you're talking the rear wheel, also has a clever cadence sensor built into the hub, removing the need for an external sensor on the crank. Each kit uses a battery, the color, size, and power of which is available in multiple versions. They all look like a particularly durable looking water bottle when installed on the mounts, which is pretty cool to be fair. It looks, doesn't look out of place. Now, when these kits are combined, the need for the external crank cadence sensor is removed because the rear wheel can do that job internally, making the installation a little neater. You do, however, have to figure out how to house two batteries. Now let me show you around the bike once the Gico wheels are installed and my first solution to the battery challenge. Now as you can see here, we have the rear wheel awaiting connection, the front wheel awaiting connection, and the throttle connected to nothing at the moment. Now here is the mount intended to hold the second battery bracket. So this is an adapter that comes from Gico. It's part of the kit for the dual conversion. Dead simple, just rubber straps that go around your frame and then you just hook them on here in the middle so it's nice and solid. And then I put these straps over the top just to make it a bit more secure. Um, and then it's just a regular water bottle connection here, which is what holds the mount. So I'll be able to put one battery above and one battery below. But first I have to go and wire them. So let me show you exactly what I'm dealing with. So there are three elements to the dual kit. So we have the existing front mount, which you can tell it's the front because it has three connections, which is one for the motor, one for the throttle, and one for the cadence sensor. Um, now, obviously we won't need that front cadence sensor because we have the rear kit, which will actually dictate everything, which is driven by this. So this is the rear 
um, mount. So again, you've just got two connections, you've got the power and you've got throttle. In the middle is the, uh, is the conversion kit. So as you can see on the bottom here, there's no brains to attach to this one, just a series of wires that you then connect to these. So it's a case of unscrewing the bottom off here, which is five screws inside. Uh, and you do that for both kits. And then there's a video that Gico put on YouTube, so I'm not gonna talk you through that process. They do it better than me with illustrations, where I wire the two together and this one will replace the front once I've taken the brains off it, unplugged some extra cables that I don't need like the cadence sensor and then connected it to this which then by wires straight to that. Clear enough? <laughs> I hope so. I'll show you in a minute how I've got on. And then there were two I have finished. So this is now the rear kit and the front kit. So this is my surplus stuff over here which I'll put in a bag and store somewhere and never ever use again. But the rear has um, a connection to the motor so which we're familiar with and then this new green cable which in turn connects to this new green cable on the front motor coming out of there you have control for the front motor and then this is a connection to the throttle so when i wire this i'll put this under the frame and this over the frame because i think the power button on that will turn both batteries on i believe uh, and then if there's a movement from the back wheel so the cadence sensor in the rear wheel that will come in through here and it will transmit a signal to this to tell it to drive the front wheel. And likewise, if you pull the throttle, then it'll send a signal to the front and then it will tell the back to run as well. So they are definitely both working, um, but let's go and test it. Let's fit them to bike and see if they actually make the wheels turn. And so we are fully installed. So we have both batteries on the frame. So this is the original front battery and the rear battery. This is the original rear mount, and this is the new dual mount that you've just seen me wire in the previous section of the video. It's connected there, that connects both batteries and power units with this cable. Bottom battery is also connected by this cable here to the electric motor in the rear hub. And then the front cable, the front battery, sorry, leads up to the throttle and then round down the front fork to the front motor, so the 250 watt motor in there. As expected, you do indeed just use the top panel to turn it on and off. So just by powering that, that actually does tap in. Even though only one display is coming on, it is tapping into the capacity of both batteries. So you don't need to press the power button on that one. Once it's on, you don't do anything with it. You change the level of power and support on here just by pressing up and down, or you can use the app, which connects via Bluetooth and sits on your handlebars. So, the key lessons and things that I've learned here. Number one, you may notice that the bracket you saw on the earlier video that I fitted for the second um, uh, mount here, it has been replaced by these um, kind of, what are they called? Pipe uh, grips or whatever they're called, uh, hose grips, uh, where you just tighten them. Uh, the reason is I over tightened this mount onto that uh, bracket you saw earlier and I actually ended up pulling the bolts through the plastic, making it completely useless. So I've swapped it out for this. This is, in my view, a better solution. It's probably scratched my frame a little bit because I didn't put any protection on my own fault, but they are solid as a rock. So if I'm honest, I think they're a better solution for this under frame. I have, of course, had to lose my mud guard to get that on here, which means I've also had to lock my front suspension because otherwise this gap, uh, if there's any give, then the wheel's gonna hit the battery and obviously don't want that. We'll have to wait and see how that feels. Um, in terms of performance, uh, I'm only going to know what the cadence sensor element feels like once I take this on a ride, which I'm going to do shortly. I'm going to go and do the guild wheel, which is uh, between 21 and 22 miles and uh, has lots of ups and downs. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Should be a good ride. In the meantime, I can test this. I do have the throttle here, so if I just push that, I can definitely feel that both wheels are trying to pull the bike away. So there's definitely power going to it. It definitely works with the throttle. Um, the test now is gonna be the ride. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, 
conclusion time. First, let's start with the ride. Now I completed the route of 21.9 miles in one hour and 14 minutes, giving an average speed of 17.6 miles per hour. Now bear in mind, as shown on the screen, this route includes an overall elevation climb of 684 feet over the course, so there's lots of ups and downs. I pedaled the whole route and kept the motor at level 3 without using the throttle. Now to put this into context, when I do this same ride, albeit without the added diversions that I experienced yesterday due to building, it's 21.7 miles long and takes me around 1 hour 35 to 40 minutes give me an average speed of around 13 to 14 miles per hour. Now when you compare the two results, there's no denying how impressive the Gico Dual Kit is, trimming 25 minutes, or 23%, off my overall time. However, there is more to the ride than simply the time it took. Firstly, the converted bike is heavy. Adding both motorized wheels and two batteries along with the mounts increases the weight of the bike by a not insignificant nine kilos. And you can feel this, especially when you brake, because that added weight, your brakes just aren't used to it. And it just takes a little longer to slow down. Also, I had to remove my front mudguard to fit the second battery under the frame, but this also meant I had to lock my front suspension to avoid the wheel bouncing off the battery. As a result, every pothole or bit of rough ground made the bike jolt around a lot with the extra weight and lack of suspension. Secondly, the cadence sensor in the rear wheel is very clever, but for some reason it was not as consistent on the ride as I would have liked. Applying power for a few seconds and then stopping for a few seconds while I felt I kept my pedaling consistent. Now, after a while, this became a little frustrating. Now I'm fairly certain that 100G will likely fix this with a software update in the future, but I didn't like the element of the ride. That aside, when the power did kick in, it felt fantastic. I pedalled hard for the entire ride, as I was keen to make sure it was still a good workout, but when that dual power delivered to get me going, I felt super powered. It gave me a boost when I needed it and allowed me to then build up my speed the old-fashioned way through pedalling. Plus, Unlike when I completed the same route with both the Gico front wheel conversion kit and the switch kit, neither of which lasted the whole route, I arrived back home after this ride with an impressive 46% battery remaining. This is testament to the great way the two batteries work together, as despite them powering two motors, they managed to use considerably less power than when used independently to power just one motor. I guess that is the benefit of dual power to distribute the workload. However, that also brings me on to another challenge. The law around electric bikes in the UK is very clear on a number of points. Firstly, you cannot solely use a throttle, as I mentioned earlier. The motor must only be used to support the rider pedalling when used on public highways and cycle paths. Secondly, and particularly relevant in this case, the maximum power which an e-bike is allowed in the UK for public use is 250 watts. That's a 250 watt limit for the bike, not each wheel, sadly. That makes the dual kit unusable on public roads in this country, in this form, which is a shame. Now to counteract this, Gico have built the option into the software that it takes less than one minute to turn off the motor in either wheel through the app, arguably making the bike legally compliant, strictly speaking. You can also unplug the throttle or disable it through the app, and then the bike really is okay for UK use. You could then argue that the extra weight of two batteries becomes unnecessary, but with that increased range from two batteries, you could genuinely probably cycle with one active wheel for at least 50 miles, which is amazing. So with these options, challenges and benefits available to you, what's my conclusion? Honestly, the kit is very impressive. The power is addictive, but the fact remains that it is a legal risk in the UK to use it as intended. As a result, I would have to say that I do not think this is the best choice for you UK cyclists. If you're in the rest of Europe or in the US, then this thing is brilliant fun and I don't think you would regret it. But for here, it just doesn't make as much sense as simply buying the rear conversion kit and using that. Now, as you may have seen in my previous video, I found the Gico rear conversion kit an absolute pleasure to use, still giving that super powered boost when cycling. It was easy enough to fit, and of course you'll knock four and a half kilograms off the weight of your bike compared to the dual kit, and the power delivery just felt natural and smooth. I'm just not sure anyone needs more than that. 
So one closing note, as it has come up in comments in my previous videos, also consider a torque arm for your bike when fitting an e-bike conversion kit. Not all bikes are the same, and your safety should always be a priority. Finally, huge thanks to 100G for providing me with the GECO kits to make these videos. The team at 100G have been great to deal with, and I would recommend them to you all day. In fact, if you do choose to buy one of their products, and as a thank you to you for watching this video to the very end, if you use the code PAUL60, as shown exactly on the screen, you'll receive $60 off your order at checkout. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.